Hey, it's Kaylee. Welcome to Gravity and Orbits. We're going to explore gravity's part in keeping the Earth in orbit around the Sun. Gravity is a force that everyone and everything experiences on Earth every day. It's the force that keeps us from floating around and keeps the satellites that power our TVs and our phones in orbit around the Earth. But most importantly, gravity keeps the Earth in orbit around the Sun. And this is what gives us life. Earth's orbit around the Sun is what gives our planet the perfect amount of energy to produce life as we know it. Remember this guy, Galileo? He's the guy from the Leaning Tower of Pisa experiment. But he was also the very first scientist to study the night sky with a telescope. But while Galileo was observing the night sky with his telescope, he made one big mistake about gravity. He believed that gravity only existed on Earth. Luckily for Galileo and for all of us scientists, Sir Isaac Newton came around and corrected Galileo. He discovered that gravity exists everywhere in space. But really, everywhere in space? How can that be? Did he, did he think astronauts would float around in space? What about being weightless on the moon? It's actually quite interesting. When we see movies or clips from space, it looks like the astronauts are weightless. But really, what they are experiencing is something called constant freefall. Constant freefall means that your body is accelerating at the acceleration due to gravity, or little g. We know that this is 9.8 meters per second squared on Earth. It's the same feeling a bungee jumper has when they jump off a tall bridge, up until the bungee catches them. But how does the force of gravity affect our planet? Recall that our solar system has eight planets. Can you name them all? Plus, there's a ton of moons and asteroids. You can learn more about the solar system in the astronomy series that we have on this website. But how does Earth stay in orbit? Let's first define what an orbit is. An orbit is the path an object takes to revolve or go around another object with mass due to gravity. But what does the gravity have to do with it? Well, remember this equation for the force of gravity between two objects that are not touching? There's an attraction between the sun and the earth that is trying to pull them together. If there were no gravity, the earth would just fly right on by the sun. There would be nothing to attract the earth towards the sun and keep it in orbit. But if there is a force pulling the sun and the earth towards each other, why doesn't the earth just crash into the sun? The earth has a velocity that is moving perpendicular to the sun. But as the earth passes by the sun, the earth feels the gravitational attraction and is pulled towards the sun. It is the combination of the Earth's perpendicular velocity and the gravitational force towards the Sun that keeps the Earth in orbit. But what factors would make the Earth crash into the Sun? If we made the force of gravity between the Earth and the Sun larger, the Earth would crash into the Sun. But what would we have to change to make the force of gravity larger? We would have to give the sun or the earth more mass. And lucky for us, mass cannot be created or destroyed. So we never have to worry about the earth crashing into the sun. Now we're going to play a game to explore all the possibilities of orbit with different masses. Let's play. Here we are in the gravity and orbits lab. We're going to do the example of the sun and the earth together, but you can do any of these when you play. Include the moon, just do the earth and the moon, or even try earth and a satellite. 
but we'll stick with this one for now. So what you can do here is you can change the mass of our sun, so we can either make it smaller or make it way bigger. This is what it is in real time right now, or we can change um, planet Earth's mass. We can make it smaller than it really is, what it actually is, or we can increase the mass. So another fun thing to do is we can turn on our gravity force arrows so we can see from the center of the Earth to the center of the Sun, there is a gravitational attraction of both of these objects with mass. What do you think will happen to those force arrows if I increase the mass of the Sun? That's right, they're going to get bigger. So but this is just following the law of universal gravitation. And if I change... Earth's mass, let's say I'm going to make Earth's mass less. Those force arrows get smaller. So let's just go to what we really see in our universe today. So I'm making the Sun and the Earth have the masses that they have. So this is the actual gravitational force that they have. And let's say, uh, let's turn on the velocity arrow so you can see how it's always perpendicular to the orbit. And we're going to run the simulation. So now you can see these force arrows keeps Earth attracted to the sun, maintains that orbit shape, while this velocity is always trying to pull the Earth perpendicular away from the sun. So that's what our universe actually looks like. But let's see what happens now. I'm going to increase Earth's mass. What do you think will happen with this increased force between them? We can turn on our path to help us see. And if I increase it even more, you'll see those force arrows got even bigger now. They're passing each other. And what do you think is happening to my orbit? It looks like it's getting smaller. So orbit would get closer together. What would happen if I increased the sun's mass? Those force arrows are so big. <gasps> Looks catastrophic. Pretty cool, huh? So I'm going to give you a chance to play around with all of these things. You can turn the path on and off. You can turn the velocity arrow on and off. You can even turn the gravity arrows on and off. And you can just visualize how um, the sun and the earth are interacting. So have fun. Give this game a try. And try all the different ones as well. And remember to always be clever.